Hello, everybody, and thanks for checking out this live talk. Uh, so we're going to listen to a little bit of, um, of some of the sounds of um, kind of connecting the lines. That's, that's kind of the, the basic idea behind this, uh, although the title is um, um, Bebop Scale Shapes. So we are going to write out some Bebop Scale Shapes. That's going to be the kind of the main thing for that. Um, but kind of the ultimate goal here is to connect lines in a or connect changes with lines uh, in a sort of stepwise kind of kind of motion and that's where um, the bebop scales can um, can really uh, help out so I'll start out by playing a little bit and uh, what I'll say is I'm not going to do bebop scales exclusively but um, but you will hear some some lines that will include those um, those types of scales and those types of um, concepts as well. So um, let's get started here. I'm going to take it at kind of a nice and easy tempo here. Okay, so um, some of the things that that work with with this is we end up getting a little bit of a, um, some chromatic kinds of lines, and I'll go over some of the ideas here behind uh, some of the things that uh, we're doing. So let's change our screen. So if you are watching this on uh, the YouTube channel, it's for members. Um, thanks for being a member. And if you're checking this out on the podcast, thanks for checking it out. Um, but uh, one of the benefits here of the um, member areas, you'll you'll see the, some of the visuals, uh, including a little bit of a MIDI guitar neck here and some other close-ups. So, so let's keep going. So, so basic one basic idea is take a a chord that you're that let's say is a tonic kind of chord. Then uh, you might take and you might have heard me playing this a little bit of a line here. This little chromatic line between the sixth and the fifth of those of of that chord. Okay, so if you were to take a whole scale, let's say, say we kind of went backwards. All right, we'd go like that. Now you could do uh, one thing that would be a, a good um, approach would be to take just maybe a few notes. One, 
maybe like five notes and kind of get those get you know going through the um the scale and what that does for us is it is it if you start on a beat or if you take a um, chord tone on the beat and you um, play play through one thing that you'll notice with the um, you know, the basic scales um, that are seven note scales is that you're gonna have a um, a spot where if you keep going like that you're gonna have um, chord tones on the opposite end of the the beats right so if i started maybe a two octave in major scale so we have start here on the root so we have one two three four now the root an octave higher is on the end of the beat so now this would be uh, so this would be on the end of the beat. All everything would be switched around. So that's sort of a kind of a problem. Um, if we're what we're trying to do is play chord tones on the on the beat, which is part of what we're trying to achieve here. So so the thing about a bebop scale, which sort of fixes that, is you play. Um, well, let's let's demonstrate that one one more time. So let's switch this over. So one. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so on the second octave up there, the chord tones were on the ends of the beats. Right? So, what uh, the bebop scale kind of does to solve that is you get one, two, three four and then you can start it all over again one two three four one okay so it's it's pretty powerful because um if you if you take a measure and you play continuous eighth notes let's say and, and if, if you don't still it's gonna apply but um you're gonna you're gonna find that um, at least for one given uh, chord, you're going to be able to spell out the chord tones. And it's not that we have to do that exclusively, but but for this concept, it's, it's important to be able to do that some of the time. So um, so let's think about some some of these uh, shapes and things uh, here as we as we go through. So what we did, was we took and we connected between the fifth and the sixth for the A flat chord. Okay. Now we could also do this for a minor chord. So we're using um, uh, this Donna Lee, right? So let's say we have a the relative minor. So the second half of the tune goes to a relative minor. So, so there, let's say well, we might choose a couple of scales, but let's say we just have a minor scale. Okay. So you might think of that as the Dorian mode or um, um, but generally the minor scale. So what we can do there is kind of the same thing that we did for, for the other one. So we could take that scale and connect the six and the five with a chromatic tone in between. So that, we, that way we get one, two, three, four, one. Now you might also use that with the um, melodic minor scale. So we say melodic minor scale. Okay, 
so we could do the same kind of things. So. Okay, and then we can use those maybe even interchangeably. So if we maybe if we go descending, maybe we play minor scale. For example, just throwing that out, and then maybe upward do the melodic minor. Okay, so um, so those are some some spots for the tonic type chords. So the tonic major chord, tonic uh, minor chords. Um, then when it comes to dominant seventh chords we can choose to um, to connect maybe a different part of the scale so let's talk a little bit about that so we have this chord f7 okay i'm gonna put a flat nine on there okay we can use that to move us into to the next chord but Let's think about what type of scale might th might think about, for example. So, what if I say, okay, um, choose choose to practice the Phrygian dominant. Now we can take the root and the flat seven and connect a, a chromatic tone in between there. So what we're going to get is um, one, two, three, four, one. Now I see all those tones that I played on the beat are all chord tones of a uh, F7 uh, arpeggio, right? So, so then the notes in between are, are just kind of connecting. So you could really accent, you know. I'm going to move away from that screen for a second. The MIDI neck won't pick it up unless I'm picking it. So. Okay, and you can hear lines like that through this tune. Um, so, so that's the concept there. So, so put the eighth note in, into... Um, right in between the flat seven and the and the root note and you probably heard me do that quite a bit on the intro playing so i did do that quite a bit um so let's look at um let's look at the uh two chord for a moment here so two chord let's go with more of like a lydian dominant sort of sound so Okay, so same concept. We're going to put a tone in between the flat seven and the root. So we get one, two, three, four, one. And then you can keep kind of going. So, okay. So what it does is, is it helps us with our lines. It helps to, us to connect various things um and then this is also the approach that you might take on a predominant type chord so for example well we have a b we do have a b flat minor for example uh so you know we could play so notice this is the same scale but from b flat that we talked about with the minor uh, scale. Okay, but this time we're we're connecting the uh, flat seven and the root. Okay. All right. So that since we have this flat seven in here, so one, two, three, four, one. Okay. So that's that's part of the um, predominant. 
type chord. There's another another instance with the um, two five D flat that goes to the four chord, and that's another spot where you could play. To connect your um, your lines. All right, so um, let's think of okay. Now there's a predominant that is a minor seven flat five. We have the G half diminished, right? So we could we could have let's say let's say we just play the scale itself. So we could connect the flat seven and the root. So okay, and then you could even maybe make a change to that. Maybe give that give it a E natural, then the E flat. Okay, so a couple of approaches there. So the uh, main um kind of concept is that um you you might connect the five and the six on tonic type chords so putting placing a chromatic tone in between those two tones and then when it comes to the dominant seventh and the um uh, predominant type kind of those active sort of chords you might say then we'll put the chromatic tone in between the root and the seven, those tones. All right, so let's slow it down a little bit and then um, play, play a little bit more on this tune here. Okay, so there are some examples of um, playing on on that and using some of those uh, kinds of concepts. So um, certainly didn't do that exclusively, but um, that's sort of the kind of the idea of how that all um, can kind of work out. All right, well, um, that is going to conclude our uh, talk for today. Thanks for checking this out. And um, if you are interested in becoming a member and you're checking this out on uh, the podcast, please visit um, fretprince.com um, or you can visit uh, youtube.com forward slash fretprince and uh, learn more about that there. Um, and uh, for those members out there, thanks for joining. I'm going to try to get as many videos out as I can this week. Uh, so all live streams, lessons and talks, and um, and uh, may have a talk for the general audience about uh, Wednesday. So hopefully, see. All right. Thanks again, and I'll see you all 
in the next one. Have a great practice session.